you're excited about rain barrels, please stay tuned because a lot of these principles uh, apply also for your overflow or for the downspouts that you, you don't have hooked up to barrels. And even if you don't have downspouts, there's lots of great ways to direct water in your landscape to keep your rainscape um, functioning with all these different tools. And it's really the sum of the parts that makes all the difference. So um, you, can, you can mix and match any of these strategies uh, depending on your site and um, your goals. So I would love to ask everybody in the township, how well are you directing water? Um, and I would tell you that your goals with directing water, if you're going to effectively rainscape or dabble in rainscaping at all, are to soften the flow, slow the water down and do anything you can to encourage it to spread out and sink in. And then you get bonus points if you plant the rain. And like we discussed in the self-watering garden section. So if you missed that, it will be a video that you can find online. But planting the rain, that is using plants um, and directing rain to feed plants is really the best use of rainwater for all kinds of different things. So check that out. Um, so like I said, the strategy is the same. If your barrel overflow, like in this left-hand example, comes out from the barrel itself, or this barrel is plumbed um, in line with the gutter. And so even if, uh, so the overflow in this situation comes out of the barrel and back into the gutter, um, regardless of the situation, you can use these principles. It's also the same if you have no gutters. So each one of the V's that come together um, where the roof line forms a valley, um, just like in a mountain valley, water is going to collect here and run off and with quite a bit of force on um, those points in the roof. And so even if you look a little further, this roof has multiple valleys that could all interact in a big rainstorm to create quite a bit of flow at those points where it goes over the side. Um, so you could still stick a rain barrel there. You just want to have a sort of an up, on, upside down umbrella type of shape to catch that water and reduce some splashback. But you could certainly put a rain barrel under one of those sections, or you could use one of these strategies just the same. One of the ways to help um, soften and direct water when you don't have a downspout is to give it something to cling to because water um, inherently wants to kind of stick to itself and to objects through surface tension. And so by giving it a rain chain, and there's all kinds of wonderful different um, decorative rain chains, or even literally just hanging a chain um, from that corner where the rain really spills down can help to direct it to um, something in your landscape once it hits the ground. When I ask you how well you're directing water, I would like you to take a look around because with our abundant rain. Quite often I find these when I'm looking around people's houses. Uh, so definitely fix any obvious problems, regardless of if you're putting a rain barrel at the end of this downspout or not. We want things to function effectively and please clean out your gutters because those are one of the most common but frequently missed sources of mosquitoes in our landscape. Um, and so for all kinds of good reasons. Uh, you want to get those weeds out of there. So when we say how well are you directing your water, if, you, if your gutter looks something or your downspout looks something like this, I would say you're doing none of those things. Um, the water has a very um, high erosive force when it comes out. You can see that it's starting to pit away the asphalt um, underneath this downspout. And so there's a lot we could do better in a situation like this. Um, if you've got one of these um, downspout sort of bumpers, please install them in this orientation where the, the bumper is at the back. I see them turned around so often with the bumper at the front and that just retains water but has no plants to help pump that water. And so it does create mosquitoes. So put the bumper at the back. They're meant to just, um, keep your yard from having a big eroded hole in your lawn. So it does soften the flow of water, 
but it's really doing not much else uh, to help you in effectively directing that water to your landscape. So here we've got a little bit better situation going on. And um, of course, every downspout can be different because of the different situation you've got going. This one's definitely softening the water and it is slowing it somewhat by the coarseness of all these rocks, um, but it's not really doing much else. And actually, because there's mulch uh, at the end of this uh, rock run, it's just moving um, the power of water to this section where it's likely to scour a hole because it's run out of that softening force. Now, um, this might get slowed enough that that hole just takes a while to develop, but I would argue that you could ameliorate this situation by, oh, by putting some plants here and create a little opportunity for that water to be sucked up um, by some green and then you're going to win um, win back some points by planting the rain. So you might be thinking, well, shoot, let's just get rid of it all together. And certainly I've seen this situation, which is not super effective because this isn't actually even, you know, directly on there. Um, this has holes in it. And if you have some of this stuff in your yard, it is fantastic at breeding mosquitoes. So this might be softening your the water, I guess, to a degree because you're not having to deal with it, but it's actually um, making a different problem of breeding mosquitoes. And to take a brief moment, because I know there's all these things people call French drain. It's this perforated black pipe. Um, it's laid, should be on some aggregate base. They have these catchment boxes. The problem with these catchment boxes is they're generally not installed correctly or they clog up. And so they hold water in the bottom uh, one to two inches. It's organically rich. It is a mosquito buffet. You don't think about it. You can't really get to them. Um, they're all throughout your yard and probably your neighbor has them too. So if you live in a place with a lot of these French drain, Please open every single one of these access points that you can, tie on some rock proof string, put a mosquito dunk in there. They should last um, about 30 days and they'll survive that whole system getting wet with rain and then drying out and wet with rain. And after 30 days, when you pay your water bill, think water, do I have water that's breeding mosquitoes? Go check on those dunks. If you pull it up and it's still there, it's still working. And if it's not there, it's time to tie another one on. And it's super cheap insurance because nobody likes getting bit by mosquitoes. And that is 100% what is happening in these catch basins um, if you don't treat them. So that's my little side note as your mosquito surveillance coordinator. Um, it's that corrugated piece that we showed before actually is one of those flexi pipes and it's just pushing that water further away. That is certainly something you can do. I'd really make sure there wasn't a weird big dip in this thing so that it holds water to make sure that water just shoots off. Um, this kind of a situation is definitely slowing and softening. Um, it's also spreading water out to some degree. See, we've got this rock run that's quite a bit wider. Um, I myself am a bit of a klutzy gardener, so I'd be worried about putting my digging fork through this, perf this pipe and perforating it. Um, but if you're a lot more cautious, this could definitely be a good tool for you, especially if um, your situation warrants that you have to move away from the downspout before you start um, spreading out that water. And um, again, if you were to direct this rock run over to another little landscape beds or a tree or some shrubs in your yard, you would get those bonus points for sinking that rain and, and planting it, you know, feeding plants with that rain. So these don't require you to build a whole self-watering garden. This is just a great tool, especially if you have downspouts. But like I said, even if you don't, you can take where that water is hitting and direct it 
um, because it's going to follow that slope in the path of least resistance. So when we look at some of these rocks, um, and you don't need this much rock, um, this is kind of excessive, but my goodness, what a missed opportunity. Because what's this, like the sidewalk or the driveway? Um, if you had just turned it this way, all these plants would get some water. And also a, a word of caution, water is not just going to make this turn because you moved the rocks in this um, orientation. If the slope is going that way, the water is going that way, these rocks just become sort of a decorative uh, accent. So here's a case where we've moved the rocks further into a landscape bed instead of directly onto the driveway. We're trying to slow and sink that rain. You know, we've got that softening effect as it and it's not uh, eroding our mulch, right? And if you really take this concept to the next level, we can work with, we can always have a bend. We can work with the natural way that water wants to be. But if we create like a V shape, just like the, the valleys in nature, if we create a V shape where we're gonna hold water into that rock run a lot easier and see how really you would need only half of these rocks here um, or here to build something where you just build up the sides a little bit, make sure that you're you're giving it something to bounce off of, and you'd have lower or flatter rocks in the middle. And so if you were to visualize this bank and this bank sort of being like bumpers, and as the water comes through, it, it makes a beeline for that first um, sort of turn, and it does get turned by the rocks being higher and curved and holding that water in just like in a river valley. And the water loves to meander and that bends, that curve that we're creating actually also helps to slow it down and dissipate some of that force. And if water's not coming with so much force, it's not gonna erode so much. And then we have it spreading out in the bottom of this mulched basin where you can imagine you've planted some of your um, great transitional plants that want a little bit of moisture and um, but not wet feet because we're not quite at the bottom um, where it's going to soak in yet. So just some thoughts about your downspouts and please it does not have to look like this. Um, this this you could do the whole neighborhood. You could fix like a few downspouts in the entire neighborhood with this much aggregate. Um, it's also being mined from somewhere, so just be cautious. Like you don't, it's so expensive. You really don't need to do that. Um, just a few well placed rocks can do a lot to direct water a lot more effectively um, in your yard. And like I said, bonus points for planting the rain. Where can we put this rain? Instead of just treating rain like something that has to be moved off the land as fast as possible, down the driveway, into the street, gosh, and then we have to irrigate the next day. Um, let's sink that rain into things we already care about, things we already have and grow. You can quite easily take one of those little downspout um, turns and diverters, or even just that flexi pipe and put it onto an existing tree that wants that water. Um, depending on how much water is coming off that pipe, it might not be appropriate for every tree. Some trees do like to be quite high and dry, but if you have a tree that you know you normally water or struggles, or especially if you have fruit trees or citrus trees, they would love that water to come down every rainstorm and be directed to them. You can have these wonderful, um, existing beds just perk right up with all that good rain. So it really doesn't take a lot of work to just divert and direct that rain. Um, if you do find you have a real gusher of a downspout or a real wet area that develops that you might not have the time, inclination, or space to do a full self-watering garden, you don't want that much variety, you just have maybe like a four by four area, three by three area. What about one of these plants that really like wet feet? 
and they are all shrubs or vines. So they're gonna have great structure and really shrubs and a lot of vines are way less maintenance than perennials. You don't have to cut them back. They require very little pruning. And so these are some real good ones that create all kinds of other good pollinator value, habitat for birds, food for birds, foods for us, like pawpaws and elderberries. Um, we can eat those and they love having these real wet situations. And so if you already have palmetto in your yard, they love the wet feet, um, just go with it. Give them that water. They will actually help to pump that water back into the atmosphere through their growth, through putting on leaves, but also through transpiration, which is a fancy word for trees sweating water. It's sort of how they pump water up through their own system is coming from their roots and out through pore spaces in their leaves. And that is like a big hydrological pump. Um, that's why forests are cooler, not just from the shade, but from all that moisture that's being evaporated through. And so these can really be a great way to sort of deal with a, a real wet um, area or area that's getting a lot of rain, but um, you don't want to put a whole garden. Now, if we're going to direct the rain to one of our existing landscape plants, I would encourage you to think of your landscape smiling. And who wouldn't want a smiling landscape, right? Something that makes us happy. So if we look in this situation, you know, you could certainly make it so water was directed to some of these trees um, and think quite often what I see how people landscape, it's um, kind of making these hummocks. Um, and so if you think of a, a muffin tin, um, water is going to run around these sort of tree islands that we like to make. It's not going to really sink in or slow down for any length of time to give water to the tree. I want you to think about instead turning the muffin pan upside down and creating a bit of a depression so that some of that water can hang out. Now we don't want to make it soupy for trees, but if we just do a few minor things, we can really help them thrive. You can see that this tree is pretty much looking dead. This is not fall. It should have leaves on it. And what's happening is the water that's coming and hitting the ground, the turf, and then rolling down that hill is actually bumping off the backs of these tree rings here and going around the tree when really, if that was just level with the ground and we put more of the rocks in or these bricks in a smile around the front of that tree, it would intercept all that water and let it percolate down to feed that tree. Now you notice these trees in the background look pretty good. And that's because there's downspouts feeding them rain right there in the landscape bed. And these poor trees, are just sort of on an island where the rain that does fall misses them completely. So think about that muffin tin and how can you make very small adjustments in your yard so your trees get an auto watering um, effect. So we go from these crowned up beds to more of a concave situation where there is more space between this porch and the front of this bed than it maybe looks. Um, but it's kind of even at the back and pulled rain that comes off of this roof line um, and feeds those plants. And so you think smiling beds, happy trees. This is further out at the same property where you can see that the rocks are very much in line with the grade of the, of the yard. And you can see the slope goes this way. So it's fatter at this side and it's just intercepting all this water it's still allowing places for water to keep going. Nothing's getting soggy, but it's just giving a little bit more water to these um, beautiful trees. And they're just thriving with a very simple little fix that probably you could do this afternoon. I love catching people doing great things. This is a real place in the woodlands that has maybe never heard any of us talk about any of this. They just did something really great. They have 
very even pavers at the back and then a little bit steeper dealing with the grade of your yard and in in the same way just catching rain into these beds before it, it goes off lots of room for rain to move um, beautiful curvilinear lines very pleasing um, plants look happy here's another one that's just a smaller bed here's a here's a swale or a, a small roadside ditch in this neighborhood and um, you know it's probably making mowing easier to have this little uh, raised wall here but look they've made it even with the ground so as the water does travel towards this natural low point where it's designed to drain it's also watering these coldest plants and so some good options to just work with the rain instead of against it and so here we have a tree ring again and there's an erosive area here where this water is coming off all this hard um, paver this hard um, porch step and it's coming around this tree on its way to the the front ditch or swale where they have put some rock to try and soften that force of water um, you can see that the lawn has been eroded enough that there's this other more water loving plant that's filling in behind it and just if we took a bit of time to pull this bed out here with the slope, right? The water is telling you where the slope is and took off this back bumper that's just pushing the rain in this direction. If we took those and just added them to this side and left it like a smile with no hard back on it, you can still set a, a course of paver into the lawn to keep it the, the lawn from getting into the bed to keep it easier to edge but just make it even so that that water can go and feed that tree the tree will be happier you won't have these bare spots in your lawn and um, it'll be just successful on all accounts um, so here's another option where there's a great um, depth of bed at the front here but the slope is going this way and you can't fight the way water wants to go. So look at all this erosion that's happening down here. If this bed just swung out this way to intercept that water and slow it down and give it a place to percolate and sink and a few more plants, um, if you filled this in, you wouldn't have to do it again, but you can keep filling this in all day long and it's just gonna keep happening unless you really get with the water instead of against it and give it a place to sink down slow it spread it um, that's the key and so i would argue that these uh places where you see erosion in your yard are a great opportunity to do things just slightly different and get some great reward out of it um, so again smiling beds happy plants in yellow for you can't really tell this is where the ditch is around the corner you can see some beds here with trees in them with rocks and i would argue that you could take the rocks off the back sides of both of these beds and even make a third bed that is nice and um you know odd numbers are pleasing for design um, all these trees would get more water you would still not have any risk of flooding because the water is still going to go into this ditch where it's eventually going to go but you would catch all that water coming across the yard to water some great plants um, create some great habitat something beautiful for your yard here um, it's a good segue to our next section because here is a nice little piece of decomposed gravel instead of more pavers um, and that's important because any place we can let water pass through uh, really helps to get it sunk into the soil where it belongs instead of running off and creating erosion or creating other issues for us. It also, like I had said way previously in um, the section on self-watering gardens, a lot of the times these trees that we have, like over here, 
um, are accessing more water because there's water being able to run through this material instead of it perhaps being concrete and then running off in a way. So it, it might not be obvious, but your plants can still um, use all the rainwater that's falling on these um, permeable surfaces, porous surfaces. Lots of different design options to suit your style. Paver patios. Um, this is like grass crete. They call it sometimes. It's concrete that you can let the grass grow through and you can mow right over it. Perhaps um, something you might have already thought of in your own yard, a little flagstone path. Um, decomposed granite's great. And there's even really innovative products like this, which is concrete that's permeable or porous, where you can see that the water is just running right through. So you can have a hard surface like concrete, um, but still allow water to pass, which is pretty fun. And um, there are a lot of incentives to catch the rain. And so um, uh, rainwater harvesting supplies and equipment are actually sales tax exempt. So if you get your um, rain barrel, you won't have to pay sales tax, which is awesome. Um, the other incentives to catch the rain, if you are a Woodlands water um, user, as far as that's who's on your water bill, they will give you 50% off the purchase price of native plants, of rain barrels, um, irrigation, rain sensors, all kinds of good stuff. Please check out their website. Um, and see what the details are for that. The rebate comes back to you on your water bill. You can scan that QR code or um, just go to that link. And um, so it's a great, great reward for the, the yard and also for your pocketbook. And um, if any of this got you super excited about water and you want to do more um, to get involved in your watershed and um, help in any way uh, with just water quality and water conservation, then I would say reach out to us, uh, Environmental Services, Terry, who's been facilitating this class, is the Water Queen, and she has all these amazing opportunities on the go where you can learn and give back to our community. Um, the Storm Drain Marking Project is a great one to just remind people only rain down the drain, like we explained it doesn't get treated so we want to keep it as clean as possible and rainscaping on your property is a great way to do it um, but marking those storm drains helps uh, tell your neighbors uh, how important it is to keep those road uh, those uh, storm water clean uh, as much as possible before it hits the gulf we also uh, tackle invasive species and pet waste which is a real problem um, so if any of that sounds interesting, we would love to hear from you. We're also trying to pilot a project for doing some hands-on self-watering gardens um, in public spaces, potentially also if you have a space that you would be willing to volunteer in your yard to create a self-watering garden. Um, we're trying to develop something to make these exciting um, gardens more visible and um, just involve more people on the hands-on side of it um, being more confident. So if any of that sounds good to you, please reach out to us. Love to hear from you and your comments and thoughts. Um, and so just to recap on, you know, thinking beyond the barrel, thinking how to work with water, think soften, slow, spread out, let it sink. You get multiple bonus points for planting the rain that is using rain to grow plants. A super simple thing you can do is just redirect where your downspouts go or your, your bulk of your runoff that comes off your roof and make some smiling landscape beds uh, to help pull some of that water to your trees before it keeps going on its way to the gulf. Um, Porous services as much as possible will help everything um, recharge in your yard and put more of that water into the soil. Uh, check out rebates, which is usually Woodlands water, but also you can save some sales tax and be a water champion. If any of this sounds exciting and you want to try something, please 
tell a friend or tell two friends and get them excited about it too. Um, and of course, you can always come join us at the Watershed Project and um, get your hands dirty for the community. And if you do one thing today, I would ask you to take a simple step to turn one downspout from something hard like concrete over to something green. So with that, I will open it to any questions with eight minutes there. So Megan, um, talk to us a little bit about rain barrels themselves. Would, would you have any information about how difficult it would be for a homeowner with some a bit of woodworking skills to clad their own rain barrels, say with pickets? Oh, that would be a great project. I don't think it would be difficult at all to clad something with pickets. Um, you want to deal with the curvature of the barrel. So that's where there's a, a fine um, play between how, how much that barrel you know, curves versus how wide that picket is. So probably you might want to you know, run them longwise to be narrower, but it, it all depends on, on your situation. Um, as you can see in some of those pictures, the Montgomery County Master Gardeners have clad a whole bunch of their big metal cisterns in wood. Um, so I would uh, really encourage you to reach out to them or we can reach out to them on your behalf and see if we can hook you up with um, someone to discuss that with. But absolutely, I think that would be a very doable project that you could pretty much figure out um, you would just need like a metal band to hold them on. And if you, honestly, if you Google cladding a rain barrel with wood, you probably end up with all kinds of resources and YouTube videos and everything. But we can definitely work to get you um, hooked up with a local knowledgeable person too. Okay, asking you to put on your master gardener hat again for a minute. Um, so earlier you talked about using mulch in the rain gardens and that would apply to any gardens really not even just those but using mulch in an area where or where there is more moisture um, someone has asked about it getting weedy in the mulch so uh, what are your practical suggestions for avoiding so many wet loving weeds, if we want to use that word weeds, growing within the mulch? Um, good question. So I might tackle it a few different ways. Um, I would investigate what the weed is. It might be a wonderful native ground cover that uh, would be worth just promoting. I know I have some areas of my yard that have horse herb in them where the lawn is really not successful and um, that's because it's quite shady and it is a little bit more moist because it's on the north side of my house and um, my lawn guy was uh, mowing it and it seems to survive the mowing just fine um, but it took me a while to see it bloom to realize that that's what it was so i would say for for number one see what the weed is now if we're talking about like nut sedge or something um that's pretty horrible stuff i would definitely um just think that if you aren't starting with that kind of a situation, if you're just really trying to discourage weeds in general, more mulch, like thicker mulch. Um, mulch really needs to be put down in, in like on the matter of inches, like a couple inches of mulch. Um, a fine dusting is just not gonna do it. Um, I found in my experience, the, the pine straw can really help in wet areas because it itself doesn't really retain a ton of moisture and it creates a lot of airflow and it's so fluffy that it's really difficult for weed seeds to get established. So you could just put on a really good thick layer of pine straw, uh, pine mulch, pine needles, that's all the same thing. Um, and, and that could be really good versus maybe that would be preferable over like a whole bunch of leaves. But really, if, if the mulch thickness is there, it, it should really suppress weeds. And, and then, like I said, the other option might be to just 
um, out compete the plants themselves with other good plants that want to be there. So maybe consider a living mulch, like a living low growing ground cover that really favors that environment. But otherwise, I really don't think a self watering garden is going to invite any more weeds by having um, a constant source of water like it does. So um, do you know, Megan, if there are any local sources for different looking uh, rain cisterns, rain barrels off the top of your head? That's a super good question. Um, I haven't been out shopping for unusual rain barrels. Um, so I can't speak that super effectively to it. I wonder if some of the master gardener water, like rain harvesting specialists could, um, I would say you could start with some of the funkier nurseries around here and just see if they have them or if they could direct you somewhere like say an Arbor Gate. Um, they have so many pots and things. Um, I haven't really noticed rain barrels there, but they might be able to point you somewhere. Unfortunately, a lot of people get this stuff online, you know, they're really interesting looking stuff. Um, but that's a really good question and we could do some more research to better be able to better answer that. Um, Terry, do you know any off, maybe even Bob Daly would know some good spots. And I get so hampered by being in the woodlands, you know, <laughs> sometimes about like not so funky of um, yard decor. We haven't really found a, a source right here in South Montgomery County, but there are some places in Houston. So right. I would say that, you know, everybody just Google stuff nowadays. You could Google rain barrel cellars in Houston um, and see what comes up there. Yeah, time for a road trip, I think, to some of these cooler nurseries and things. Um, and then tell us, let us know what you find. If you find something really cool or a good source, there's lots of options, just let us know. And you mentioned earlier a couple of local sources for some of these native plants. Um, would you mind mentioning those one more time? The ones off the top of my head, and we can certainly send you a, a more thorough resource list, and, and please, Terry, chime in, but Nature's Way Resources um, up on Sherbrooke, it's sort of the east side of 1488. They have great native plants, a lot of which they propagate themselves. Um, Arborgate Nursery will have some if you go that far and are looking for funky stuff. But closer to home, Ace Hardware at the Sterling Ridge Shopping Center um, is a great resource for native plants. Um, and um, I mentioned earlier Green Star Nursery, if you're really looking for some plants that are very adapted to these like um, intermittently wet feet, um, that can be a good source, but they're out in Alvin. So again, road trip. Uh, who doesn't love a road trip to a nursery though? Um, uh, Buchanan's has been touted as a good source of native plants. I have yet to um, go there. Um, another, oh, um, Morning Star Nursery is another good one. Your local um, nonprofits are great sources of native plants. It's not going to be open, you know, every day of the week, but it's really worth looking for the plant sales hosted by your local master gardener chapter. Um, especially here, we've got Montgomery County Master Gardeners, but even Harris County Master Gardeners and um, the Native Plant Society of Texas has a local chapter and a Houston chapter. They also have plant sales. Um, another good, the, Houston, the Arboretum might have some native plants, but what's the other one I'm thinking of? Mercer. Mercer has good native plant sales. What else, Terry? What am I missing? Well, so, um, you know, overall, I, I think you've given us a lot of ideas, but just to kind of wrap up here so we don't run too far over, if you really want to learn more about, especially rain barrel, but rain catchment in general, and you're not right here in Montgomery County or the northern part of Paris County where we're located, wouldn't you suggest that they should reach out to their local county agent through AgriLife in extension in their county to get more information? Absolutely, Terry, good point. Because of the nature of Zoom these days, gosh, you could be tuning in from all over um, your local extension, AgriLife extension or university extension program um, from the land grant universities. 
are a wonderful resource. That's where Master Gardener program and Master Naturalist programs originate from. There are there's cadres of, of trained volunteers willing to help you. There's quite often phone lines that are manned to answer your questions. Tons of great resources online. Um, if you if you search anything um, about any of this. If you add .edu to the search in the Google bar, it, it's going to give you way better information and likely uh, source um, do source documents from your extension or, or any university extension, so a little better research-based material. And so, yeah, absolutely. Reach out to your Master Gardeners and your university extension wherever you are, and um, you'll find a wealth. And one last comment from Maggie. She says there is a place east of Conroe on 105. So you might also, for, for rain catchments, rain barrels and such, you might also do that Google search for rain barrel sellers in um, Montgomery County or in Conroe, if you um, wanna take a look there. So um, we're sort of run out of our time today. Nice bunch of questions at the end. Uh, Megan, you'll be happy to know there are many nice comments uh, about the presentation today. Folks are saying thanks so much. So with that, folks, uh, we look forward to your attending the next workshop we have to offer. Uh, if you're if you want to come to learn more about drip irrigation, that's always the first Saturday in March. So save that on your calendar now. Um, one more comment is to make sure if you're buying barrels from someplace, they have to be food grade. More thanks coming in. So folks, we have to end here. But thanks, Megan McNair. Send your request for more information to. Enviro, there we go. Uh, Megan's giving you her email address directly, or you can send a, a uh, request for information to environmental services in general at Enviro at, and then that same extension, the Woodlands Township TX.gov. Yeah. There you go. So, folks, thank you so much for participating with us today. It's been wonderful meeting with you, and we'll see you next time. Thanks, Megan. Thank you.